in, in the country from that point of view. Um, then we got, we, we didn't get in and we got balloted out of the basket by one, which has been unfortunate. So we thought, well, we'd come for the trial here. And he ran, yeah, it was probably as well as we thought he'd, as well as he'd run in the trial. And today, we just couldn't believe it. I mean, he, he was in with a chance, but with 30 runners, who can say, you know, who's yes. going to win it? Very hard to say we were going to win it. You were, you were favoured by the draw. At least you got a good draw well, to draw get was, a good position early. The draw was fantastic. You know, we drawn two. He kept the inside rail. I was only watching the race and thinking, between first and last, it must be 40 lengths. It's coming to the straight. Yeah. And you, you're never going to make that up, whatever, whatever horse you got, are you, really? So the draw does make a huge difference. And do you feel the cheek pieces gave him a bit of edge as well? Yeah, I think they probably did, yes. It was lambs all bits, and so, yes, made him concentrate a bit more. But he ran in the race last year and was near last in first, really. Mm -hmm. But we were drawn sort of on the, the, the actual very outside horse last year. It does mess up your whole programme, really. But, it, uh, it does indeed, but, but to, here he was he was really good and uh, really gutsy in the finish as well, wasn't he? Yes, he, uh, and he does stay, because he, mm. he, he gets three miles over hurdles quite comfortably, and he does stay. Uh, I just, you know, I haven't really sunk in it. We've won it. <laughs> but there we are. It's, it's fantastic. To come to the home of flat racing and win their prize and to do it for the second time, it is wonderful. <laughs> You're a very welcome interloper, Terry, certainly. Yeah. Um, what's the plan for him over, over in the National Hunt Rules now? Oh, he'll you... go back to three-mile hurdling, really. I, I don't think we should go tracing with him. I wouldn't think so. I think he'll stay hurdling. Uh, it depends on what his handicap is. He's not that well handicapped, but... Um, um, and he'll run in three mile because he just stays really. Yes. And he jumps quite well as well, you know. And again, will will Philip have a target and work backwards from it? Is it that kind of? Oh, I th generally, he does. Yes, <laughs> we haven't planned the three mile yet, but I, I expect he will do. I should be talking to him tomorrow morning, and uh, we'll so we'll chat on a Sunday morning, and uh, yeah, he'll, he'll have something worked out. I'm sure he will do. I think everybody knows how much Philip Hobbs thinks about, about things. What would you like to say about him as a trainee? He's brought you much success over oh. as a j jumps trainer, but also now two Cesarevichs, which yeah. is a major feat. Yeah. He's very quiet. He's, he, he never gets excited. I mean, if he was here, he wouldn't be jumping up in the air or anything. But he is a good trainer. He's very thorough. He keeps in touch. He phones me every week without fail, whether we've got a runner or not. You know, he still phones up. His communication is second to none, really. Uh, he's a very modest guy, really. But we've been with him since he had about 12 horses, really, you know. So we've been with him well over 30 years, well, 40 years. And he must have trained me at least 150, well, over 150 winners now. That's, a, I mean, it, that's amazing, isn't it? And that, that testament to the two of you, I think, and how you've worked together, that you've been together for so long. Yeah, we, we only ever about one argument, I think, when I wanted to run Rooster Booster at Cheltenham and he thought he should go to, to another meeting. But that's the only time we ever, not an argument, but we had a difference of opinion then. But, no, we've always got on exceptionally well, really. Yeah. He is a very good trainer, as you say. Absolutely. And he's a non-betting man, so which probably helps overall, I think, when you've got to go racing, not to be in the, the betting business, actually. And how about you? I mean, obviously, this is the right time to ask you. You must still be loving being in horse racing. Oh, I am, yeah. I'm 82 now. So it's, yeah, it's you're good. 82, Tony, I am, really? yeah, and, it, and it's, <laughs> it's much harder now than it is to, to, to go to all these places. But we, we came up yesterday... We stayed last night and tonight, and we should go back to the back tomorrow. And it's 180 more for us from home here. So, will you be at Cheltenham next week? Yes, I will. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> Cheltenham wouldn't be Cheltenham without no, you. No, well, well yeah, Cheltenham's one. And Cheltenham's only about 18 miles from where we live, really. So, Cheltenham is our home track, actually. Um, and it's, you know, it's the sort of home of national hunt racing. This is the home of the flat racing, really. Wow. Yeah. You might, you might have to start occupying a small area of Newmarket now yeah. after two wins yeah. in the Savage. Many congratulations, sorry. I'm sure everybody at home is absolutely thrilled for you. Thank well you done. Very, thank you very much indeed. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, Dilly. Cheers. Yeah, well done indeed to Terry Warner and all the Philip Hobbs connection. An excellent piece of training. Now, as the runners leaving the paddock, making their way down to the seven furlong start for our next race, you see we're only a minute away from post time. Obviously, it's going to be quite delayed here. 17 runners over seven furlongs. Colin Nuff's number one, Richard Hughes. Two is Galicia's James Doyle. Colorado's the amount of Tom Quilly looking to give him a, a big quick across our quick double after taking our feature race. A colour party is William Buick for Letty Ocean Murphy. Princified uh, Lemus de Souza on board. Gilded Lily is uh, the amount of Cam Hardy. Eight is Irish Rook as uh, Liam Keneary. Jasmine Blue, number nine, Jim Crowley. Lash Cal Robert Havlin, number ten. Malice is Pat Dobbs. Number 12 is Ruda, the Mount of Ryan Moore. 13, Mrs. Eve, Robert Tart. 14, Sharik is the Mount of Joe Fanning. 15, Tazfin, Andrea Adzini. 
Gororo was head done up and Philip Makins uh, representative here. Number 17 is Twitch, the Mount of Graham Lee. And the Duke of Roxburgh Colours, who is your 3 to 1 favourite. Lash Cal is 6 to 1, it's 8 to 1, and bigger price is the rest. Now, I'm afraid I'm having to hand over the responsibility for Paddock Noakes wholly to Sam because uh, I was chatting to Terry Warner after his Zarevich win uh, while these horses were in the paddock. Uh, Twitch is the favourite. At least she's got some form to analyse as well um, and she ran quite encouragingly on her soul start so far. <laughs> Given my abilities at identifying paddock talent, I'd have been better talking to Terry. You'd have been better doing that. Um, yeah, she's a lovely filly, well put together, um, compact and certainly looks fit. Um, she made her ground off a slow pace last time probably wasn't, uh, didn't find the, the, the race run to suit her ideally, um, looked a bit of a very pedestrian gallop and she, she probably made up more ground than most fillies in that race and looks to have bought her on, she, nice temperament, um, you know, she had a couple of handlers but nothing untoward and she, she went out of the paddock and, and you know, she's a real Christian so she just looks a nice type and understandable to see the money come for her. Yeah, it's interesting to see that horses with experience are occupying the top of the market rather than some of the newcomers, and the, the newcomers are in the majority. Lash Carl is, is next in, and she's had a couple of, of runs. The last run, a little bit better than the first. Yeah, I must admit, I wasn't that struck with her. She didn't exactly knock your eye out. I mean, she's, there's nothing wrong with her. She's perfectly satisfactory, but she just... She didn't really strike me as, uh, you know, a wonderful-looking filly. I'm probably being pretty harsh, you know, but she's, she's probably a doer rather than a looker. And... You know, she's posted two reasonable efforts, but I think, you know, she needs to probably step up on what she's managed to achieve so far, I think. Before we hear from uh, Mark Johnson exactly how to pronounce this horse, how do you reckon you, you pronounce, pronounce Moruard? Moru Moruard? Do, do you like that? Morada? Murad? Yeah, one of the two. Mark will tell us anyway. Horse number 12. Horse number 12. Um, well related. Um, obviously, uh, the same family as Pat Kai, Moden, Sapatadi, lovely, lovely type. Um, strong, well made, well put together. It just mm. looks a real horse for next year, um, mm. to be honest. I mean, not to say that she can't possibly win here, she can, but she just looks to have everything in place physically for you know a, a three year old campaign, to be honest. I'm hearing that Mark's going for Moirad, which if oh, you'd have given me 100 goes at it, I wouldn't have come <laughs> up with Moirad. OK. Um, if she does manage to win here, she might actually be quite smart. Yes. I mean, they had a very, very well-backed horse win at Kempton, didn't they, in the week, um, that had obviously been showing great signs at home. The market would suggest that perhaps she isn't quite as far forward, but she's a lovely, lovely type from a family that gets better with age. So Indeed. it'd and be interesting to see. You know, if she runs on nice into third or fourth... <laughs> Notebook twitchers will be uh, mm, in definitely, clover. Definitely, absolutely. And she's the one in terms of the newcomers that the market likes best at the moment. Colorado uh, was third behind Lady Correspondent. That was in the same race in which Twitch was fourth. Um, she shaped quite well also. Yeah, she was the one that sort of made some of that pace. She was pretty professional, pointed her toe well and, and you know, looked to... You know, as if she didn't need the education particularly. Uh, she travelled quite nice off that modest pace and, and kept on tidily enough. She got four white socks. You won't miss her in the run. Um, she'll probably be up in the van, I would think, as well, blazing away with those uh, those four white socks. She's a nice-looking filly. Then we've got Colour Party for John Gosden, William Buick riding horse number four. This is a newcomer as well by Invincible Spirit. And the dam is a full sister to the Oaks winner, Casual Look. Yeah, I liked her as well. Um, strong, well put together. Um, plenty of substance about her as well. Certainly looks a, a filly for next year. Um, I think she cost 240000 so she wasn't cheap. Um, but, you, you, you know, she, you do get a little bit of um, substance uh, to the, for, the, for, your, uh, for your buck there. Then we've got number one, Bella Noof for Richard Hughes and William Haggis. What did you make of her? She's a newcomer too. I thought she could be fitter, uh, I'll be honest. Um, I think William Haggis trained a couple of her relatives, uh, Yufton and Lady Noof. Mm -hmm. no, what was Yufton? Yufton was... Definitely. It was, wasn't it? Yufton was second on debut and Lady Noof won a Leicester Maiden. Um, and Yufton got beat by Barley Moe in a driving finish. So, sort of the offspring or, or that her relatives were got ready first time but I, I did think she could be fitter so if she manages to run well then I would suggest she could improve considerably on that. Okay, interesting. Her stable companion is horse number 14, second string for Sheikh Hamdan Al-Maktoum, that's Sharkea. I didn't see her. 
Oh, Oops. sorry. Right, okay, what been... did you make of a pedigree? <laughs> pedigree um, related to Ertigel and Udouge. Both of them ended up being 100 rated. Udouge um, was fourth in a gym crack. Ertigel was second on debut, and Udouge won on the Chester debut. So that's another family that William has obviously managed to get ready quite early on. Of the bigger prices, anything that caught your eye physically or form wise deserves a mention? Um, I thought Kalika got a bit of growing to do. Um, Farletti, unfurnished, um, could be fitter, looked a next year horse, as did Frenzified. Um, what else was there? Malice was uh, calling constantly. That's yeah. the only thing that I, I oh, was able to see. Uh, Tasfin, very attractive filly. I think she'd be a nice type. And to, uh, to, Tokororo, tall, leggy. Um, would do, probably want a bit more extra time, I would think. But I thought the, the paddock pick was... Well, are, we, are we pronouncing the stout filly? Uh, I can't remember. Let, 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 let's go <laughs> yeah. back and find out, shall we? Yeah, yeah. Horse number 12. Uh, Twitch is the favourite at <laughs> three to one. Um, I'm going to write this down in blood now once I hear uh, Mark say the name. Over to Mark. Thanks very much indeed, guys. Um, the research tells me, and also asking around Gaelic speakers here, that um, this is one of the pronunciations for the Gaelic name Moira. If you remember the newsreader Moira Stewart, so you pronounce it like that. It's apparently a very ancient um, Gaelic or Celtic queen, and her name was Moira, but she is, pr um, it was spelt like this. So apologies if I've got it wrong, but I've, I promise you I've done just about all this possible over the last 36 hours to try and find out. So Moira it is, um, let's hope that uh, all that effort puts her in at least the first three here. <laughs> now, Kalika's got a little bit restless in stall nine, but hopefully she's calmed down now. Tazfin's taken a bit of time to go in. Now we're down to the last one. Should be Twitch. So Twitch will be one of the last ones to move forward into stall number 10 for the Betfred Supports Jack Berry House Maiden Philly Stakes in the gate. And they're off. Two-year-old maiden fillies over seven furlongs. Slow to go was Farletti. Also a little slow away in the early stages. Gilded Lily towards the near side together with Tokororo. As they go through the early stages, right up with the early pace is Lashkal over towards the far side. Also showing a little bit of speed towards the near side is Kalika. And it's Kalika who is leading the near side group as they go through the first quarter mile. Leading the far side group, the blue and white colours of Lashkal, who's then being followed by Colorado from stall one right up against that far side rail. Jasmine Blue is another one who is towards that far side and then frenzified. Meanwhile, the group towards the center still led by Kalika and then the dark green colors of Bella Noof. The yellow is Taz Finn. On their heels is Twitch and so too is Shakaya. As they race on now through the halfway point, on now inside the final three furlongs. Towards the far side, it is Colorado who's got the white blaze who now just about has the lead. Twitch now being ridden along with Kalika towards near side and Bella Noof. He's then being followed towards the far side by Irish Rookie, who is trying to stay on as they race down into the dip. They've got a full and a half to go. Irish Rookie coming through to challenge Colorado towards near side Kalika. And between horses is Lashkala. And then making ground is Shakaya towards the near side. Over on the far side, Irish Rookie. Lashkaya on the near side. And then Taz Finn, who's staying on late, racing up towards line. Irish Rookie wins on debut. Over in second, Shakaya and then Taz Finn. Irish rookie has won on her race course debut. This daughter of Asimov, trained by Martin Mead and ridden by Liam Keneary. Second is Sharkea for William Haggis and Joe Fanning in the second colours of Sheikh Hamdan al -Matum. And third is Taz Finn for Andrea Zeni and Roger Varian in the colours of Sheikh Ahmed al -Matum. The winner is in the colours of Rick Barnes and she has won on debut. She challenged towards the far side. She saw off Colorado, the long-time leader, who just shifted to her left in the dip. And she has shown enough to see off a couple of horses that race more towards the centre and are reeling her in late but not quite quickly enough. If she was, say she'd have been a 5-2 to two favourite on the back of some, would we be saying that was a nice performance? I mean, it's a nice performance, obviously, but would we be saying that was a really smart performance or... I mean, it's obviously a, it's obviously a, ni a nice performance. I mean, she did it very nicely. She travelled into the race well. Mm. She looks like she should be able to get at least ten furlongs. She mm. would think on her pedigree. So mm. yeah, it is. It's a nice performance. I don't no, know no way to. Well, we shouldn't be prejudiced just because it's not. But you we know, are though, aren't William we? William Haggis. Well, uh, are we? Well, you might not be, but <laughs> I think punters are, aren't they? We see a fifty to one chance there uh, by Martin Mead, and all of a sudden you're, you're 
you know, you're downgrading the form. And, and to be honest, there were seven or eight. Of l- that's more what I'd be worried that, about than finishing in a in a great big group. That yeah. would that would concern me more. Anyway, well, well, the fullness of time will tell us what the form's worth. Your first in visual impression, and I, I, I don't want to knock the winner, but was that, you know. It probably wasn't the greatest renewal. Well, it's a, it's a new race, isn't it? But it probably wasn't the greatest seven furlong maiden ever run. But that's that's an obvious statement to make. But she travelled very well through the race. Sixteen thousand euro purchase. There'll be delighted connections. Um, you know, she's she's had to race almost a little bit isolated, and then she just comes back on the bridle, just coming out of the dip really, and uh, has quickened up nicely enough to go and win in the style of a, a good perform good performer. Uh, Sharkea hasn't had the clearest of runs through. Uh, maybe she hasn't entirely handled the dip on her debut either. Taz Finn's come a, come a little bit further back and was initially a little bit outpaced. Yeah, it's funny. I mean, the, 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 the race was... I mean, obviously we haven't been able to compare times yet, but, you know, Colorado has beaten Twitch again. I, I'd be disappointed if you'd back the favourite or, you know, you were with the favourite.